Hello and welcome to Loving Me Creatively. I am your host, self-love guru, and fellow human family, Krishna Eskowat. I took a little break from this podcast to really kind of digest all of the things that have been happening around the country and the globe and wanted to come back to the space with a very potent vigor to allow us to continue to step into loving ourselves creatively during this time. For those of you that are new to this podcast, Loving Me Creatively is a special place of contemplation and transformation where we get to dive into self-love wellness, explore decolonization, and allow ourselves to begin to love ourselves creatively. And... I like to start each podcast with a moment of contemplation and move into sharing story because this is what they call in Hawaii talking story, part of the most, one of the most important aspects of being part of a community. And so talking story is part of this podcast. And finally, we close every session with a segment on promoting our transformation. And in that section, I channel in some energy from one of my gem family and utilize the energy that is currently available to us in the cosmos to provide some meditative stimulation to your body mind in support of your transformation so thank you thank you for joining me this week if you've listened into some of the past episodes you might have recognized that every week there was a theme where there were some core concepts that were being shared. And I like to use my tarot, The Wild Unknown, to support this. It's a beautiful set of tarot. So if you're interested, I definitely encourage you to uh, you know, take a peek at how tarot can provide some insights and messages from the other dimensions that are moving simultaneously with ours. And so it's beautiful to get messages um, to help give clarity. And so I've been pulling cards to support this podcast and to support our contemplation section or segment And this week, two cards popped out. The first was the Five of Wands, which of course is the number five in the tarot, and the Judgment card, which is number 20. And both numbers um, are divisible by five. Actually, five is is a prime number. And two being a really powerful number, if you break down 20 to represent two, It's a really powerful um, energy, a synergy, duality, choice. So let's talk about these tarots and use them in our contemplation. The first card, Five of Wands, represents conflict, tension, and diversity. And what's important with the concept of conflict is that it's pushing us into a space of change. So this card is asking us to tune into one another. It's asking us to, you know, 
really lean on the diversity that comes in many different opinions and perspectives by engaging in group brainstorming and being engaged by the conflict, the push for change, um, and really be excited for the newness that is coming. And we can channel the energy of rage, of anger, of frustration, of disheartenment, of just really feeling that there's injustice and lean into this energy of of change and really being passionate about change and channeling that energy into passion, fiery energy. Now, the second card that came out was the judgment card. And as I mentioned, judgment with the number 20 representing choice and duality is all about decision making. And it's all about redemption and awakening. And it supports the idea of transitions. So wow, we got the first card, five of wands, representing tensions and change and the judgments really solidifying that energy with allowing us to understand that redemption is happening as we awaken and as we move into a awakened state of change because change can only happen when there is a realization of a new of a different path and so we have a lot of decisions that are available to us at this time and the judgment card is a fire energy so again movement the passion and it's ruled by pluto which has everything to do with major aspects renewal death rebirth cycles so we are going through that right now friends <laughs> family we are going through that and of course, the sun card was at the bottom. And if anybody's familiar with the sun card, it's a beautiful card. And I got the intuitive sense that the sun represents us. It represents our individual soul and the collective soul of the humanity that is rising right now as people are really being pushed and feeling called to discuss judgment and to act in the name of justice and so this tension right now is really pushing us to a stage of change and so I'm super excited about that now let's use this energy to support our contemplation and again contemplation always being rooted in the notion of love and loving ourselves and moving in that direction of something perhaps we haven't truly experienced yet now for those that of you for those that are less familiar with my work i have been really diving into the new earth and providing spaces for activation awakening and accessing our self-love wellness through a series called New Earth, New Love. And so I've been talking about the New Earth for some time and it went online around the spring equinox. And we are really stepping into this New Earth space, this energy, this frequency, this, this Earth upgrade that we're going through at this time. And it's really fascinating and amazing to see the readiness and willingness for us as a collective to really stand together not to say that we haven't been willing to stand together before but I feel that we are ready for a change we this has been brewing for some time and what's important for us to consider as we contemplate on as we move forward in this new earth direction is that we are contemplating how our actions, how the shifts and changes in our self-realization and in our realization of our place in the collective 
is serving our highest good. So that means us letting go of the old version of us. And that means addressing some aspects of ourself that we hold as a shadow, but that is connected to the past. Because that is what is needed for us to step into the new. And that's what the judgment card really is all about. It is asking us to make a life-changing decision. And with the Gemini and North Node at this time, we are given the energetic support of the logical mind and the intellectual mind, the mind that desires to expand its knowledge and to um, really take in the new ideas. And with the just with this judgment card, we're being asked to blend this intellect and logical mind with our intuitive self. The intuitive knowing, the knowing that lie within the body mind. And so this integration is truly important because the integration is going to support us healing from deep wounds. And right now the deep wounds are really connected to the colonizers' methods, their approach to oppress and control, to create hierarchy. The old earth patriarchy, the colonizer's reality. And those deep wounds have created this notion of separateness. We are separate to the other. And we've been given all these labels that we are meant to internalize as facts, as truths about us that further support the separation in things like race. In things like class, in things like gender, assigning that according to sex. Instead, knowing that the human is fluid, just like gender. Class is an illusion. The idea of wealth in our country, in our world. We're being asked to make life-changing decisions right now. And these life lessons that we have had from the past by maybe being unaware of the colonizer's reality, maybe going through our decolonizing journey, maybe in the process of our awakening because we've taken the time to engage with those life lessons as our guide. And using it as our guide, as the judgment card asks us, we share these experiences with our group, with the groups, with the communities, our communities. Our communities are part of the city we live, the communities within the networks that we've created across the globe, communities that transcend borders and create transnationalism. Not globalists, one world order. There is no hierarchy. The judgment asks us to relinquish the past narrative of the colonizer and to move into integration, integration of the logical and the intuitive, integration of the body and the mind, integration of the present and the future, removing the past, clearing ancestral karma, and moving into a place where we are rising together as a human species. We are rising together. And this is possible when we are engaging with enthusiasm, with the idea of joy and play for the new, for the novel, for what's never been existence. And so the diversity of opinions and perspectives as we grow, as we, as a group, as a collective in our cities, in our states, in our countries, around the globe, that we take this time to brainstorm as we begin to integrate and move into what I am calling the age of integration. That is the new earth. 
we are integrating and we are really understanding this in a new and powerful way. And so the sun at the bottom of the card is so powerful because it is reminding us of our power, our power, our light within, that which guides us if we allow ourselves to listen. And that's the key. And that's my question that I want to pose to you in this episode in our contemplation section segment how are you serving your highest good what needs to die and be purged in order for you to rebirth our highest good is always connected to the love When we tap into loving ourselves, feeling the light, the fire within, our gifts that we all possess, that we take the time to acknowledge them, we recognize our shadows, we move steadily fast in our gifts so that we can begin to move and transcend and evolve as an individual, it naturally supports the collective. And then... When we feel that our cup is full because the healing has taken place, now we're ready to really work in collaboration with others. And I'm not saying that we cannot heal together as a community, that we have to do it alone. But what's really important is that we are actively engaging in our healing and looking and treating ourselves with love and compassion before we are really ready to collaborate. Because the step in between that is the process of activating our voice and in the global liberation grassroots project i founded in 2016 social change coalition we really are activating the agent of change mindset and in that agent of change mindset model that is stage stage two to activate to activate our voice, to activate our stories. Because through the expression of our experiences, while we simultaneously and continuously heal and move and evolve, those stories are powerful agents. Those stories are powerful agents because that is the true evidence of our common experience and experiences as humans. I I often talk about the notion of the human being. And the notion of us moving into oneness as a human family and oftentimes the notion of sameness comes up i think i'm going to do a whole workshop on that (laughs) but oneness and sameness are not the same moving into oneness does not infer sameness and that's something that we really need to engage with and be honest with ourselves, because the reason that we engage with perceiving sameness as negative is because we've experienced the labels and the negative oppressors associated with that and then we self-identify we over-identify we internalize which is what internalized classism internalized racism internalized oppression is is the internalization of the colonizer's narrative And we are often unaware. So as we move into loving ourselves, we activate our stories, we share our stories, we build community, we support one another, we we support the diversity in those opinions and experiences because we know with enthusiasm that all those stories are important in our group brainstorming and in our movement to the change, to the new, something that we've never experienced before. And this is where we get to activate 
imagination. So that is a good segue into segment two, where we get to talk story. <laughs> we get to share some stories, and um, I look forward to including some new guests to this show. And so I, that will be coming up very soon in some up and coming episodes, so stay tuned. Before I move on, if you are interested at all in any of the New Earth and New Love Workshop series, please take a peek at those on my website, selflovecreatives.com forward slash services or forward slash shop. And that will take you to either more information or purchasing that workshop series, Representation of the Divine Feminine at $13. So it's very affordable for you. If you are interested, the very first workshop in the series, Building Self-Love, is free for you. So take advantage of that free offer. And then if you're interested, please feel free to take a peek at the others. So during this segment of storytelling, I wanted to use the text All About Love by Bell Hooks as a as a um as an activator <laughs> um to be able to tap into what love really represents and how new love can really be supported by the notion of community there is a phrase here by Parker Palmer. Community cannot take root in a divided life. Long before community assumes external shape and form, it must be present as a seed in the undivided self. Only as we are in communion with ourselves can we find community with others. This is really powerful when we think about loving ourselves creatively. Um, because if we are and, and again, linking to what I mentioned regarding doing the work of healing those deep wounds. Because if we enter a space of community and we are unaware of our traumas and need for healing, we are taking the colonizer's reality and we are expressing it. And we, not, we might not mean to express something that is oppressive to someone else. But if we choose to not look at ourself and what we need to work on for our own evolution, for our own transcendence, for our own highest good, then we are less able from a place of our highest good, from the place of love, to truly create engagement and do so with, with, with value because we step into integrity. We step into our integrity. I'd like to read another passage from the same chapter on page 136. Top of the page. When we see love as the will to nurture one's own or another's spiritual growth revealed through the acts of care, respect, knowing and assuming responsibility, the foundation of all love in our life is the same. There is no special love exclusively reserved for romantic partners. Genuine love is the foundation of our engagement with ourselves, with family, with friends, and with partners, with everyone we choose to love. While we will necessarily behave differently depending on the nature of the relationship or have varying degrees of commitment, the values that inform our behavior when rooted in love is ethical. They are always the same for any interaction. She goes on to say, 
Realistically, being a part of a loving community does not mean we will not face conflicts, betrayals, negative outcomes from positive actions, or bad things happening to good people. Love allows us to confront these negative realities in a manner that is life-affirming and life-enhancing. And this is really powerful to to internalize as we talk story, you know, real talk here about shifting our relationship to love and what love means within as we creatively maladapt, as we decolonize and we really begin to love ourselves. In my own self-healing journey, this process wasn't always easy. And there are moments when it's not easy also. As you evolve, you are given more responsibility. And so I don't just have the responsibility of my healing. Now there is a placement of responsibility to support the ascension and the healing of my ancestors and of others on this planet. This is why I do this work. And in my own healing journey, it starts from a place of conflict intention. Something isn't working. And for me, what wasn't working was continuously getting into relationships, romantic situations, and having friendships to feel and fill some type of need for love for affection, for affirmation, for for all the things that we need to feel connected, the connectedness. I hadn't really realized that I needed to be connected within. And I don't just mean connected with myself, I mean connected with my energy, connected with my body, connected to all the parts that make me me and then connected to all other aspects of how I am connected. And this tension was, you know, pretty intense with my Scorpio moon and really finding meditation as a place, a passive place to come and to begin to feel with with natural grace a an opening up of the mind, an opening up to the imagination of the new. And I've come to realize that this experience of understanding what it's like to engage in the capitalistic world of living a nine to five and buying into the Sunday footballs, again, there's nothing wrong with uh, shopping at the mall and watching football. But as you begin to go through your awakening process and really understand and begin to integrate your body-mind-soul complex, again, this is the age of integration, we begin to feel ourselves in a different way. And so I want to share a little story about building community with my grassroots project, Social Change Coalition, in 2018 and 2019. Because that was really a journey of making myself available and vulnerable for integration and acceptance and inclusion from my community and feeling both the conflict of the rejection and the enthusiasm and the bliss of the acceptance and really learning how to balance and tune into the self and the others that I was building community with without judgment but looking at it as a way to transition and transform myself from a passionate leader with a vision to a passionate leader who is building collaborative networking alliances with groups of all types, social justice, wellness, art, and really using these spaces for activation towards our global liberation because global liberation is rooted in love and as i did that you know i had many many people um you know blatantly tell me that this 
seemed like a good idea, but people weren't going to be willing to participate. They weren't going to be willing to donate product or donate time. And those things really got me discouraged at one point. And I had to lean back into the meditative practice that I was buddingly doing as a more consistent, integrated part of my lifestyle. Living a conscious lifestyle meant taking the time to tap into myself, the intuitive self, the knowing that lies within and really beginning to trust that intuition and integrate that into my mode of being and knowing in the world. And again, this is what the judgment card was telling us or sharing with us about blending the logical and the intellectual mind with the intuition, you know, blending my ego mind, the intellectual mind, knowing that the movement was important, it is important, and really being, um, feeling the human emotion related to rejection. And allowing myself to work through that and allowing it to give me a important lesson that allowed and guided me towards the experiences I had with community that were open and allowing the movement and the group to really change and really be, start with just me, expand to a huge group of people, expanding all of the state of California and globally, and then shrinking back down to me again, and really allowing and surrendering to the process of divine timing and the ebbs and flows of life. And with everything that's going on in this country right now, I'm really realizing that I was ahead of the curb. <laughs> I was ahead of the need but the need is here and the movement has begun. We are ready for change. And so if you are interested in really looking at how to expand your agent of change mindset, I would encourage you to take a peek at all of the work that I do in that Global Liberation Grassroots Project. You can find information on the web at socialchangecoalition.com can also find some information on Instagram at Social Change Coalition. I'm periodically on there and off there depending on what's going on. Um, but I've been very quiet lately because I'm really seeing a rise in other spaces need to be vocal. And so I want to really honor the space for that and honor the the newness of what they are now feeling that is existing for them. And knowing that the space, the movement is there, Social Change Coalition is there to act as a bridging agent, to act as a visionary for those that are ready and interested to join the family. So that's my little story, you know. <laughs> Redemption comes through making a decision that we are going to be committed to the highest version of ourselves, to the intuition that tells us that what we're doing is part of our soul purpose and to do it with vigor, with self-love and to stand strong because there might be a battle and the conflict and the tension only allows us to tap into the oneness that exists in our unique instinctual desire for evolution. Self-awareness and self-awakening is happening right now. And so we can continue to step into this new earth space by sharing and activating our stories. And so I encourage you to share yours. Share your journey. How are you serving your highest good with others? Listen to their stories. Be willing to truly hold a space of listening, meaning ceasing our current thoughts and allowing the flow of information to enter our body. And then begin to come up with ideas for reply. And as the judgment card reminds us, you know, when we share with others, we rise together. So stepping into the place that offers us change 
allows us to do so with community in a beautiful way that is truly whole. Ah, yes, we are ready for our transformation. <laughs> and that lends us to our final segment of Loving Me Creatively, where I tap into a gem and allow us to access our transformation and growth. Grab yourself some water, stay hydrated. The hydration of our body is really important. The water in our body holds a lot of information. So make sure to share messages of love to your water and drink up. jasper as the gemstone that will offer energetic information and guidance because the vibration of Dalmatian jasper helps us to release any lack of trust in others. It lessens the disillusionment that we might have and helps us see their strengths and their weaknesses. And this energy reminds us to open up and enjoy life. Have fun in the process, feeling enthusiastic about the change that we will be, that we are embarking on at this time. Dalmatian Jasper helps to ground us center us and align our energy bodies, obtaining a very profound sense of balance. Dalmatian Jasper brings about a opportunity for a paradigm shift. And this causes us to see new things in a new way. So how beautiful, how beautiful the energy. Thank you. Thank you, Intuitive Self, for allowing me to spot Dalmatian Jasper and have the intuitive sense. Nope, I don't need to look for any others. This is the one that we are going to use today. Thank you, Dalmatian Jasper, for offering us an opportunity to move into the paradigm shift of the age of integration. So we move out of the old earth and into the new. With its black tourmaline spots, um, this makes the vibration of these energies also coming into space. So black tourmaline providing us protection and really allowing us to step into this newness with courage, knowing that we are protected. Dalmatian Jasper fortifies the spirit and balances our yin and yang energies. So we are, we are super open for the balancing of our energies, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the dualities that live within all of us, our differing natures which offer us balance like the light in the day. Dalmatian Jasper also helps to break down any barriers that we might have created around ourselves and allowing us to see and feel with more clarity. So we are in gratitude for that. I'm also tapping into the full moon, strawberry full moon today. It's a 
lunar eclipse as well so I am tapping into that energy so no matter what time you are accessing this video you will receive the beautiful energy of this strawberry full moon now before sharing a bit about the strawberry full moon the Dalmatian Jasper is a powerful gem that supports our earth star energy found within the root sacral and solar plexus it is connected to aries and virgo signs the planet saturn and the earth element and its energy really is most powerful for healing protection grounding and determination and it stimulates a whole bunch of amazing things um, but the most ones I'd like to really tap into are the notions of faith of wholeness devotion mental clarity contemplation friendship playfulness and positivity now the strawberry full moon is just briefly an interesting time and it's actually said to be a time that allows us to let go of any workloads and really focus on our healing so with that being said us really leaning into um, allowing us to clear our minds and find the fun and the play really <laughs> allowing ourselves to feel the truth in the statement life is a playground to step into the newness and activate our imagination so for this meditation if you have a Dalmatian Jasper, I encourage you to bring it close to you at this time, if you haven't already. <sighs> Allow yourself to feel settled in your seat or lying relaxed, lay on your back, your palms up. Begin to notice your body and slowly relax each area, each muscle, begin to notice your breath as it comes into your lungs, opening up the chest, rising the chest, holding for a moment, and then breathing out naturally, comfortably. Begin to notice how relaxed your body is where you are. Touching the floor. Notice parts of your feet. Ticklish. Feel it relaxed. Feel the energy rise, relaxing through your legs, your torso. Feeling your shoulders relaxing, sinking deeper. Feeling yourself relaxed, even your eyelashes are all relaxed. Allow the protective energy of 
Dalmatian Jasper's energy to surround us at this time. And feel this energy spiral around you, protecting you as you breathe in. Breathing out energy which does not flow or serve you. And let us take a few collective breaths together so that we might activate the energy bodies and opening up the energy centers and receiving this healing energy transmitted through this meditation. Beginning with emptying the entire belly, tucking in the belly button, breathing in at five, one, two, three, four, five, and holding for five, four, three, two, one, exhale out the mouth. Let's do that again, breathing in, one, two, three, four, five, holding. Exhaling out the mouth, one, Doing that one more time on your own, breathing in. Holding. Releasing out the mouth. And feel your body lighter. Protected. As you settle deeper into your body, feel yourself with more clarity as you. Notice playfully the air swirl into your nose and into your chest, allowing it to rise naturally and full of strength, holding in this energy for a moment. Breathing out the mouth, allowing the paradigm shift to take hold. Breathing in, holding the divine energy. Breathing out toxic narratives, illusions of separation. Breathing in divine balance within the wisdom of divine feminine and divine masculine. Holding this duality within, noticing it within, regardless of gender expression, regardless of personal experiences. Regardless of labels like race, class, allow the energy to swirl around your body, activating yourselves, 
exciting them for new growth. Feel this energy come into your heart as you expand the chest, expand out, breaking down barriers perceived within the self of the separation, trusting your strength, trusting others, trusting their strength. Feeling connected to Mother Earth as you breathe in her air, feel it dancing in the lungs. Allow this relationship to create devotion. Connected to Mother Earth, connected to the cosmos. Validating your role in her protection and her nurturance as she nurtures us. Breathing in this strength, we are invigorated with stamina and determination, playfulness in the new earth that is being created at this time. We breathe in this energy and we allow the energy in the throat to expand and intensify as we see a light. And we feel this light increase as we breathe in the nose, passing the throat into the heart. And exhaled narratives and lies out the mouth. Take a few breaths, noticing the energy passing through the nose, passing through the throat, into the heart, rising the chest. Notice yourself relax further as the toxic narratives and lies, fears, these connections are purged from the body-mind. See this energy relieve your body like a dark mass, leaving your aura and moving away where it is transmuted by Mother Earth and our spirit guides, archangel protectors. Feel your ancestors present and call them by name at this time. Ancestors in love, of love and light. Ask them to take this energy where it is transmuted in support of our intergenerational, inter ancestral healing. Feel our healing connected and ever-changing, the healing of our ancestors. Notice our body lighter. Illusions of chains unlocked as we, our bodies float. As the air playfully dances in our lung with each inhalation allowing us access to lighter, positive, good fortune energy, grounded and light at the same time. We smile at this energy, this unique balance. we feel the light of the spirit that lies within in the throat, activating our truths, allowing us to speak in balanced truths. We feel this energy rise into the pituitary gland, 
apart in between the eyebrow, the third eye chakra. And feel the energy expand around our body, offering further protection and clarity. Noticing this energy move from the breath to the lung, to the heart, through the whole entire body. Back up to the throat and the third eye, opening up our crown chakra as we see a beautiful waterfall of colors surround us. This rainbow bridge activating our awakening, activating our DNA and our cells healing themselves. We are further activated by Dalmatian Jasper, trusting the process, grounding us, aligning our energy bodies, giving us further balance as we move into this paradigm shift, connected to Mother Earth and connected to the energies of Saturn, And as we tap into Saturn's energy of power and change, we are further activated with the connections we have with other human family members. And we shift out of the paradigm of domination and control and into a power that is shared that is communal, that is unified in the community. And the collective consciousness of our oneness, of our shared purpose, shared meaning, shared need for love as all humans, souls connect to the universal experience and truth to source that is love. When we step into Saturn's energy and we ask it during this time of retrograding in Saturn through September 2020, we recognize this opportunity for contemplation about what these systems of power have meant before and allow us to step into our highest good and connect our soul purpose to that purpose, our shared purpose, allowing us to open up to this shared rainbow energy as we Take one deep breath, holding for as long as possible. Taking in this beautiful new energy, allowing it to alchemize in the body, integrate into the body. Allowing your ancestors and spirit guides to offer downloads of information and inspiration to you at this time. Jasper for that beautiful channeled energy of awakening and truly wisdom, divine wisdom in the balance. In the shift into the new and acknowledging the movement from the past, stepping into our integrity with determination and courage. Thank you, Saturn and Mother Earth, for your energies. 
Thank you, ancestors of the love and light, archangels of protection, spirit guides, and higher self. Placing your hands in front of your heart in reverence and gratitude for this abundant energy. Allowing it to validate you of our interconnectedness with all things we can see and all things we cannot see. The divinity in me sees that in you and I bow to you for your time and your energy your commitment to this change and the building of the new earth. Love and blessings to you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Loving Me Creatively. I'm always blessed and amazed by the powerful energy of my gemstone family as they talk to me and connect with me and allow me to connect to other dimensions and speak to other dimensions in this beautiful unifying consciousness that can be tapped into and in providing guidance in this meditation in the effort of our transformation and the support and protection of that transformation so thank you Dalmatian Jasper. Thank you for joining me and thank you for investing the time in this journey for yourself and allowing it to awaken you to all the parts of you that is connected to others. Allowing us to really stand in the place of judgment with integrity moving from the tensions we are experiencing during this change into the new earth with a sense of vigor in the diversity of our uniquenesses and the oneness that we possess that allows us to tap into each other to work together as one human family on this planet ready and willing and open to explore the cosmos and all the other intellectual beings that reside amongst allowing us to expand our understanding of our unique place in the vastness of the universe. If you're interested in furthering your own spiritual awakening, allowing you to awaken your self-love wellness, to activate your decolonization process, that's already happening within the body is telling us that we have to decolonize. So if you are seeking support in this process, and you're looking for someone to help you build a more conscious lifestyle that is integrating the body, mind, and the soul, please connect with me um, on the social medias. <laughs> I'm not on there too much. I try to take breaks, um, but know that you can always connect with me and find some little messages of inspiration there, Self Love Creatives. You can also find me on my website, selflovecreatives.com, where you can read more about working with me one on one, activating your ascension process, allowing you to awaken to new abundance and gifts and allowing you to reap the benefits of those abundance and allowing us all to rise together. As a reminder, the New Earth, New Love workshop series is a pre-recorded series offered to you at a very, very low cost. The first part of the series, Building Self-Love, I highly encourage you to access. It's free. It can be found on my website on the shop tab or selflovecreatives.com forward slash shop. It's a really powerful tool in activating your self-love and allowing you to step into some moments, more moments of contemplation with me. And 
I want to send my love and blessings out again to you. For any of those of you who have been included in spaces of protest to activate the voice of justice and make it known that time for redemption is here and judgment is here and change is here, I send my love to you because you are activating others and in this way you are a leader. And we can all be leaders in this way. So, love and blessings to you. Stay safe and stay hydrated. Stay curious. Stay in reflection. And allow yourself moments of quiet stillness and meditative reflection. Until next time, family. <laughs>